Hello everyone, my name is Sonu Satyadas. I am the practitioner for Open Source Technologies Synergetics. Today I am going to present a webinar on progressive microservices using the molecular framework of Node.js. As part of this webinar, we are discussing about the microservices. What is the molecular framework? How it can be used to build the microservices? The core concepts of molecular framework, the service broker and its functional components, the different transporters supported for microservices communication in molecular, the API gateway configuration for implementing the API gateway in our molecular services, the database adapters that can be used to connect uh, different types of databases within our micro service. And finally, we will be ending up with the molecular CLI, which is a command line tool for building and configuring the molecular applications. So let's get started. When we talk about the microservices, we need to understand about the software architectures that we were using for a long time. In older days, we used to build applications using monolithic framework or monolithic patterns. In monolithic patterns, Developers build the applications, front end, business logic, um, access control configurations, data access layer, all within a single project. So, in case of small applications, this approach suits better. But when we go for larger applications, which has multiple modules. This monolithic approach creates a lot of complexity in scaling, deploying, and updating. So when we build the applications using monolithic approach, we can follow the multi-tier approach, which means we can create the business logic layer project separately, data access layer project separately, and even the presentation layer separately. But ultimately, when you compile and build the final project, it is going to produce a single output, which is a monolithic application. So since monolithic applications are difficult to scale, to work with different uh, databases, and it is difficult to uh, de redeploy the applications, we need to find out some other solutions for building the applications. As a result, we got the service oriented architecture. In service oriented architecture, we are building the modules of the application as individually deployable projects, which is in a distributed format where this backend services are deployed into different uh, servers, but they are communicating each other using a service bus. 
An enterprise service bus provides the mechanisms for messaging, transport, security and other configuration. So services are not allowed to communicate each other. They need to communicate with the enterprise service bus to transfer the request from one end to another end. So the benefit of using the service oriented architecture is in case if one application module or a service goes down, your entire application's availability is not affected. Instead, the other functionalities works fine, but the disadvantage is if the centralized enterprise service bus goes down, the entire application fails. So comparing with monolithic application in which if there is an exception or if there is a failure of a component which results the entire application's availability uh, which, en which uh, result the entire application's uh, failure, service oriented architecture is more flexible because each module is deployed independently so that the failure of one service is not affecting the other one. Since these services are exposed as endpoints, it could be a SOAP endpoint or maybe a RPC endpoint which can then consumed by the client applications like the web browser based applications, mobile applications or maybe a desktop application. In monolithic applications and the service oriented architecture, we will be using a single database that is shared by all the services. The database can be a relational database or it can be a NoSQL database. When we create the monolithic applications, the application's availability is very important. So since for uh, high availability, we need to create multiple instances of the application. For that, we need to deploy these applications into multiple servers. Since these monolithic applications are heavier, which means larger in size, it takes a lot of time to deploy these applications into production servers. Monolithic applications and service oriented applications are uh, using shared database, which means there will be a single database which can be shared by all the services or all the modules within the application. For example, if you are creating an e-commerce application, there can be multiple modules for uh, order management, product management, user management, cart management and payment. But all these modules data will be stored into a single uh, database. In service oriented architecture also, we can use multiple databases, but it can be shared by other services. For example, if you have a products database which can be used by the product service as well as the order service for reading and retrieving the data. In such cases when we use the shared database it may create concurrency issues 
while writing from multiple services simultaneously and it also uh, leads to the inconsistent data reads while using a shared database because if one service is reading the data and the other one is writing at the same time it may create a inconsistent read of our data but in microservices we are using individual databases for each and every service which is not shared by the other services in case if the order service needs the products data it needs to make a request to the product service for fetching that information as i have mentioned in monolithic applications this is an older approach for building the applications where the entire application modules or components are created as a single uh, indivisible unit where the data access layer user interface and the business logic layer are created within one application when it comes to service oriented architecture the applications are created uh, as individually uh, deployable units or ind independent services that communicates over the enterprise service bus so there is an enterprise service bus that provides the communication channel between the services so if the enterprise service bus uh, not exist or its its availability goes down the applications completely goes down when it comes to micro services architecture we are building the services as individually deployable units which has its own database and there is no restriction in communication so they these services can communicate each other using some well defined endpoints uh, mostly rest apis or using some other communication patterns like a uh, message based communications or even based uh, communications every pattern or technology has advantages as well as disadvantages if you look into the pros of microservices it is a loosely coupled service so that we can easily create test and deploy the services and it is easy to adopt new tools and technologies in case of micro services uh, we can choose any language or framework which you uh, would like to uh, use for building the application for example if you are interested you can create a particular service using uh c sharp another service using java and another service using python but in case of monolithic applications you have to use a single language or framework for building the entire application microservices are easy to scale horizontally since this microservices are very lightweight you can go and deploy this microservices in quick time so you can easily scale this services so if you are running in a cloud environment you can scale this services using the auto scale functionalities provided by the cloud services which can create a new instance of the service and uh, runs behind a load balancer 
micro services uh, failure does not affect the entire applications availability if one functionality goes down the application can still run by using the other services for example in an e-commerce application if the payment functionality goes down still the customers can visit the application search for the products they can view the details of the products they can add the items to the cart and they can even log in or register to the application because all the other functionalities are still working only the payment functionality is not working it's highly maintainable and testable because it's a lightweight service you can easily uh, update and test the microservices this is independently deployable you can deploy this uh, microservices independently into any server and the entire responsibility goes to a single a single team who build the microservice for example there is a team who works on the product service or a team who works on the order service so they focuses only on the development of a single module but if you look into the disadvantage of microservices since there is no standardized way of communication so it may be a complex communication so communication from the client to the backend and between the backends microservices communication can be very complicated so it can be uh, using a rest endpoint or it can be using some uh, message driven uh, app approaches or it may be an event based uh, communication so developers can choose any communication pattern according to the requirement of the application since uh, there is no restriction to uh, implement the communication between the services the communication path or communication uh, will be very complicated it's, it will be like a mesh inside the microservices uh, applications the most commonly used communication patterns are rest services means we can create a rest http endpoints where the user can make a request to the http endpoint and it returns a response so it is a one to one communication for that follows the request response pattern every request will have a response that indicates the completion of communication the sender and receive, receiver must be online to complete the communication suppose if the receiver is offline the sender when the sender sends a request it will not get satisfied or the sender will not get in the response from the receiver or server it's a real time communication which means it is for sure you will be getting some response within a given period of time it uses the well defined http endpoint and an endpoint means an http url that can be accessed using different http methods primarily this restful services are synchronous services which uh, can be converted into asynchronous using ajax message based communications are also used in microservices where the sender 
can send some messages to a message broker service such as RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus or AWS Simple Queue Service or Simple Notification Service. From there the subscriber reads the messages and then process it. It is by default asynchronous because the sender need not to wait for the processing of the message. It can be a one-to-one -one or one-to-many communication because using the message broker functionalities, we can enable a one-to-one -one communication means uh, there will be one receiver for a message or you can use a topic concept to distribute the messages to multiple subscribers. The communication is still possible even if the receiver is offline because the message which is sent by the sender will be stored inside the message broker for a period of time. Whenever the receiver comes online, the message will be delivered to him. Since the communication is possible uh, even if the receiver is offline, we cannot say it is a real-time communication because if the sender is sending a message to the queue, there is no guarantee that it will be uh, processed within a given period of time. So it may be get processed after 30 minutes or one hour or maybe a day. Even based communications are also used in microservices for real-time communications such as sending the OTP, sending the push notifications during the operations are examples of event-based communications. So whenever some event happens in the application, we need to send a notification to another service to trigger it or to invoke it. It uses the event ingestion system like uh, Azure Event Grid or AWS Event Bridge for routing this events to the subscribers. It is also asynchronous in nature and can be used to send a single event to many subscribers. And it's a real time communication because it does not store uh, and then forward the message to the subscribers. Whenever the event generated by the event uh, producer, immediately it is routed to the subscribers. The sender and the receiver must be online to achieve this communication because it does not store any information about the past events inside the uh, event ingestion system. Now we have discussed about the microservices, what is microservice and what are the different uh, uh, communication patterns that can be used in microservices. Microservices can be implemented using different languages and frameworks. One of the most popular language that we use nowadays is JavaScript. Initially JavaScript was used only for building the uh, front-end applications, validation and verification purposes. Later it was used for building the complete front-end application as well as the back-end services. Molecular is a JavaScript framework that runs on Node.js runtime for building powerful microservices. You can create efficient, reliable and scalable microservices using Molecular. 
Molecular 0.14 is the latest version currently available which has some breaking changes and it, re it requires a minimum node version of 12.x. So whenever you refer the documentation make sure that you are referring to the latest documentation of Molecular. Molecular provides some key features such as promise based async await solutions means all the operations that we perform within this Molecular microservices can be a promise based operation means it is supports built-in asynchronous communications. Request display concept and support even event-driven communications. As we have mentioned, it is possible for us to implement HTTP REST communications, which is the request reply communications, and it also supports the event-driven communication. Built-in service registry and dynamic service discovery is supported. Built-in service registry means the services are automatically gets registered into the service registry, which can then dynamically invoked by the other services. So if one service wants to communicate with another service, it can use the service name to uh, communicate with it, there is no explicit endpoint required for uh, communicating to it. So, to use the service registry to identify the service location where it is running and communicate with it. Load balance the request and even uh, events like round robin, random CP usage or latency and sharding concepts are used. So when you run multiple instances of your microservices, the request can be load balanced and then these requests will be routed to the backend service instances using different uh, patterns. So it may be following a round robin or a random or a CPU usage based or a latency based based on the configuration that you do in the molecular config. Many fault tolerance features such as circuit breaker, uh, bulkhead, retry, timeout and fallback are supported. So these are some of the patterns and best practices that is used in the application development. They, they are by default configured inside the uh, molecular framework. So there is a middleware system or a plugin system that can be used to enhance the features of the application. Built-in caching solutions using Redis memory or memory uh, uh, LRU is supported because caching is uh, a performance optimization solution uh, which can cache the data uh, to avoid the database hits. Pluggable loggers means logging is very important in case of monitoring the applications. So you can log the messages using different logging services such as console logging, file based logging, or even different other uh, pluggable logging solutions are supported. Pluggable transporters. So transporters enables the communication between the services. So we can use different communication patterns like a TCP, NATS, MQTT, Redis, NAT streaming, Kafka, AMQP and, all, and so on. Pluggable serializers, how the data needs to be serialized and send it to the client or the other service can be customized. 
So Jason is one of the most commonly used serializer. You can even use the AVRO, message pack, protocol buffer or thrift for serializing the data. The core concepts of molecular there are different core components or concepts that we need to understand in molecular. The primary concept is a service because it's a micro service framework. So the primary concept is a service that is an isolated and self-contained microservice written in a simple JavaScript module. So a service contains the functionalities required by that microservice. So you can write a simple JavaScript file with all the actions required for the microservice. Node, a simple OS, it's a simple OS process running on a local or external network that can host one or many services. So a node is a simple OS process that can be used to run your microservices. So you can run one or more services within a single node. Local services, two or more services running on a single node are considered as local services because they can directly communicate each other. So they share the hardware resources and use local bus to communicate with each other with no network latency because they are not using the network to communicate because they are running within the same node so they can directly communicate. But remote services that are distributed across multiple nodes and their communication is done via a transporter. For example, if you have uh, multiple services created in molecular and they are deployed in different nodes, they can communicate each other using some well-defined transporter like a NATS or maybe AMQP or MQTT or something like that. A service broker is considered as the heart of the molecular that is responsible for the management and communication between the services. So when you create a service, a service broker is, to, is responsible to enable uh, the communication between that services. Each node must have an instance of a service broker because that is going to allow the services to communicate with the other services. A transporter is a communication bus that services use to exchange the messages. So how the services are communicating with other services or external resources is defined by the transporter. It transfers the events request and responses. A gateway is a simple uh, molecular service only that is uh, running an HTTP server mostly uh, that means a web server. Sometimes it uses the web sockets also that is exposing the molecular services to the end users. So this is the API gateway that is used for accessing the microservices. So if you want to access a microservice, you will be making request to the API gateway and this API gateway is responsible to route your request to the backend microservices. Whenever we make a request to the API gateway service. It is forwarding that request 
to the corresponding microservice with the help of service broker. The API gateway itself is a service that runs within a node that has a service broker. The service broker in the gateway service node forward the request to the other service broker uh, in the node where the microservice is running with the help of a message broker or a transporter. So the service broker of the API gateway is sending the request to the service broker of the microservice node. Then the microservice execute the request and then returns the response back to the API gateway and then it is forwarded back to the client. A service broker handles the services, call actions, emitting the events and communications with the remote nodes. A service broker instance need to be created on every node. So wherever the service is running, it can be an, a gateway service or it may be a microservice. There must be a, bro a service broker required to enable the communication with other nodes and services. It is possible to create the service broker manually using the service broker uh, class instance. But when you create a molecular project using the molecular CLI, we don't need to create the service brokers explicitly. The molecular runner will create and execute the broker uh, and the other services. So we don't need to go and create the service broker explicitly when using the molecular CLI. The service broker contains different uh, functionalities including the logger, context, serializers, middleware, <coughs> validators, tracing service, caching service and very importantly the transporter that help us to trans, uh, transmit the request from one node to another node. You can configure the service broker by creating an instance of the service broker class and specifying the node ID where this instance need to be executed. A service is representing a microservice in our molecular framework. A service contains the actions and it is subscribed to the events. We can create a service just by defining a simple JSON schema. So the schema contains uh, information such as name of the service, version, settings, action functions, methods, that is local methods, and the events. When, when we want to invoke a microservice from another service, you can use the broker to make a call to this service. So while making the call through the broker, that means from one service we are invoking another service, in such cases, we can use the broker.call method along with the service uh, method identifier. For that, we need to specify the version uh, identifier dot the service name dot the action method name. For example, 
as you can see in the picture we have a service that is post which uh, contains a version v2 so post.v2.service.js will be the name uh, name of the file where you can define the service the service name is defined as post version value is defined as 2 and inside the uh, microservice we can define the actions so there is one action defined find to invoke this action using another uh, service we can use broker dot call v2 dot post dot find but the same service if we are calling from uh, uh, an external service or external application via uh, HTTP uh, service or HTTP request with the help of API gateway we can use uh, a, we can make a get request to the endpoint v2 slash post slash find so by default the versioning is enabled and if you want to disable the versioning uh, prefix for our uh, service names or service uh, endpoints you can configure the no version prefix uh, true in service settings in the right side you can see a math service and the file name is by default comes as math.service.js so as per the molecular naming convention the service names always ending with the service.js so here is math.service.js which defines a service called the math and it defines the actions like uh, add and subscribe so you can send the http parameters using the context object uh, argument of this uh, method so here you can see the add method has context object as parameter or as an argument so the context object represents the http context uh, information or uh, the request context information where you can get the parameters information using that context mixins are used in services to enhance the features of the service mixins are flexible way to de uh, distribute the reusable functionality in molecular services for example if we have to define some common features and functionalities across services we can use a mixin a mixin defines the features which can be then used inside a service so that the features defined inside the mixin will be uh, added to the service schema for example as you see in the picture there is a predefined mixin called the api gateway service which is part of the molecular web uh, namespace or package which contains all the requirements or properties for creating an api gateway since api gateway is just like another regular service we can define the schema of our api gateway and use the mixins property to specify the mixin name as you can see the name of the service is defined as api and mixins uh, array defines api gw service which means the api gateway service features automatically added to the current service
actions are important part of service definitions the actions are the callable methods in our service so they are callable with the broker.call or context.call so if you want to call a service within the service you can use context.call from another service if you want to make you can use the broker.call the action calling represents a remote procedure call it has request parameters and returns responses just like HTTP request so when you want to make a request Uh, you want to make a request to a microservice you will be invoking the actions because actions defines the microservice functionalities that need to be accessed from outside the action could be a function or an object with some properties and a handler function so an action can be a direct function, a simple handler function, or it can be a JSON object which contains a handler function. The action should be placed under the actions key in the schema. So when you define the service schema, the actions are placed or action methods are placed inside of the actions key. So here in, in the picture you can see whenever we make a request to the users.login uh, here the users will be the service name and login will be the action. It makes a request to the backend uh, service nodes when the user makes a request to the API gateway. Here is the example for actions. In this schema, you can see the name of the service is defined as math. And under the actions, you can see there are uh, some action methods defined like the add method. So here add is defined as a method directly which means it's a shorthand method for the handler which does not have any further configurations so here add is directly created as a function which has a context parameter which returns the sum of the request parameters a and b but below you can see the multiplication function the multiplication function is defined as an object where you can see the properties like a caching is false configured parameters you can see a which is given as number b also given as number and in in inside the handler method we can define the actions logic so where you are saying that if the context.action.caching is not configured, we have to multiply and return the A and B. Hooks are another important part of our actions. The action hooks are pluggable and reusable middleware functions that can be registered before and before after or on error of service actions means whenever the service functions execute or service actions execute either before or after or on error you can execute this hook methods a hook is either a function or it can be a string in case of string it must be equal to the service method name so that means a method is a local method that can be called within the action or hook so if you define the uh, function logic inside the method you can specify the name 
of that method as the hook value. But if you want to directly define the logic as a function, you can do that inside the hook. The hook registration order matter as it defines the sequence by which hook, hooks are executed. So hook registration order is important because according to the sequence it is executed. Hooks can be registered at in service level or action level means it's possible for us to define the hooks in the service level means for the complete actions we can define common hooks in the service level or we can define different hooks at the action level for individual actions we can define hooks the before hooks it will receive the context and it can manipulate the context parameters meta and add some custom properties into the context.locals what you can use in our action handlers because this before hooks actually executes before the action method execute so if you want to make some changes inside the uh, request or you want to add some extra parameters to the context you can do that with the help of hooks if there are any problem it can throw an error also but you know but you can't skip or break the further executions of hooks or the action handler so if you want you can throw an error uh, from the hook but the actions will continue executing after hooks receives the context and the response and it can manipulate the uh, manipulate or completely change the response means after the action is executed the response is generated and if you want to modify the response or replace the response you can use the after hook in this hook it has to return the response because the final result is coming from the after hook so you have to return that response error hooks the error hooks are called when an error is thrown during the action calling so when the action method is executed if there is an exception then it will throw the error hooks it contains the parameters like a context and the error and it can handle the error and return another response which can be which we can call as fallback response or you can throw that error means rethrow that particular error events events are also part of the services the broker has built in event bus to support event driven architecture and to send events to local or remote services so event based communication is very important in microservices so every broker has a built in event bus so when one service wants to communicate with another service it can use the event these service actions can be within means the uh, service actions can be within a single service or it can be from remote services built in events are fire and forget meaning that if the service is offline the events will be lost since as we have discussed in the event based uh, communications when the event is raised if there is no recipient that event is discarded because events are not stored anywhere like the messages balanced and broadcast events balanced 
events are typically used to send uh, events to a particular uh, or selected uh, recipients so for example if you want to send the events only to some specific services we can do that with the help of balanced events for example from the user service we are emitting an event called the user dot purchased and that event notification we have to send to the mail service because it is subscribing to user dot star which means any user related event is subscribed here and here you can see and it is also sent to the payment service because it is also subscribing to user dot purchased event because the emitted event is user dot purchased and it is then sent to the billing also because billing also subscribing to user dot purchased right so it it can send the events only to the selected event or selected uh, services so according to the uh, configuration so you can see we are sending this event to the mail service or payment service because these are two instances or of payment so both are payment services and these two are billing services so while making a request it is sending the request only to two selected uh, nodes or selected services but in broadcast events we are sending the event notifications to all the nodes and all the services okay so that means we are broadcasting those events to all the instances to all the services uh, in in our application balance the events the event listener are arranged into logical groups so which of the services are uh, subscribing the events or listening the events they can be logically grouped and it means that only one listener is triggered in every group that means whenever we send the uh, events to a particular group only one listener is triggered and it is sending that event notifications to all the uh, services within that particular logical group the group name come from the service name but it can be overridden in event definition in our services send balanced events with the broker dot emit function so that if you want to send a balanced event we can use the broker dot emit function the first parameter is the name of the event and the second parameter is the payload means what data we want to send that is given as the second parameter as we can see in the left side we are sending some of the events using the broker dot emit where user dot created and passing the user object and in the uh, second example the broker dot emit we are sending the user dot created along with the user object and this is only received by the mail and payment services because the recipient services names can be mentioned uh, optionally uh, as a third argument right side we can see inside the payment service we are creating an event listener where the order dot created uh, is the event whenever this event is received it is executing the handler associated with that so you can specify the group name uh, inside the event definition 
broadcasted events in broadcasted events we are sending the events to all local and remote services since it is not balanced all the service instance will receive this event and we typically sending the broadcast events using the broker dot broadcast method for balanced events we are using the broker dot emit and for broadcast events we are using broker dot broadcast and send the broadcast events only to the local services with the broker dot broadcast local method which means we are sending it to only the uh, local services internal events the broker broadcasts some of the events internally and these events always start with the dollar prefix because these are some of the built in events so user can send the custom events by using the uh, broad, uh, broker dot emit or broker broker dot broadcast uh, methods so they are typically used for sending the custom events but for internal events or system events which are automatically generated by the services and these even names are prefixed with a, a dollar sign it's something like a services dot changed which means the broker is sending this event uh, if the local node or remote node load or destroy the service means whenever the service is started or destroyed it is emitting these events dollar circuit breaker dot open this the broker send this event when the circuit breaker module change its state to open node connected event the broker send this event when a node connected or reconnected broker dot started is sending this event once the broker dot start is called and all the local services are successfully started context object so typically when we create the actions or hooks we use a context parameter so when calling an action or emitting an event the broker creates a context instance that contains all the request information and passes it to the action or event handler as a single argument so it contains some informations such as id broker informations parameters uh, informations meta local variables or local values action informations event informations event name and event type so there are lots of properties and objects are contained inside the context object so the single context object contains almost every information related to the request or the event the context object also maintains some methods such as context.call or context.emit or context.broadcast or context.toJSON. So these methods can be called for communicating with other services. Suppose if you want to call another service, uh, you can use context.call. If you want to uh, emit a balanced event you can use context.emit or for broadcasting we can use context.broadcast and to get the json representation we can use the context.toJSON the broker life cycle typically when we start a broker it goes through some of the steps like a when it is starting, the broker try to establish a connection with the transporter because as we saw in one of the previous slide, every broker is uh, connected to the uh, transporter service or it uses a transporter service like the AMQP or uh, NATS or something like that. So it first try to establish a connection with this transporter when this is successfully established it uh, does not publish the local service list 
to remote node because it can't accept request yet. So once it is done, it is not immediately publishing the local services list to the remote node because the service registry need to be updated in every local and remote services. So usually it needs to publish the list of services, but it is not going to immediately publish. It starts all the services first, that means call every service started handler. And once all the services are started successfully, then the broker publishes the local service list to the remote nodes so that the service registry of the other nodes are updated with the services list. Hence, remote nodes only send the request after all the local services are properly initialized and started. While stopping, when you call the broker dot stop or stop the processes, uh, at first the broker publishes an empty service list to the remote nodes because before stopping it needs to update uh, others nodes that there is no such service available so that it is send a empty uh, service list uh, published to remote nodes. So they will route the request to other instances instead of services that are stopping. And next the broker start stopping all the local services. So it will start the stop process and it will stop uh, each and every uh, local service. After that the transporter is disconnected and the process exit. Middleware. Middleware is an important part of Molecula. It is something like the plugins which we can use inside our applications. For example, if you want to implement in the caching service or login, uh, login service or maybe a, uh, a database service, we will be able to use the uh, plugins. The middleware is an object with the hooks and wrapper functions. It allows to wrap action handlers, event handlers, broker methods and hook lifecycle events. So it's just a normal uh, function or object that contains the action handler, event handlers, broker methods and the hook lifecycle uh, events. When talking about the networking, it uses different uh, transporters to communicate with other nodes or service brokers. So you can decide which transporter to be used. It can be a Redis, Nats, Kafka, AMQP and there are many different uh, uh, transporters supported in Molecular. Most of the supported transporters connect to a central message broker that provide a reliable way of exchanging messages among remote nodes. These message brokers mainly support publish subscribe messaging pattern. So you can publish a message to a particular message broker which can be then subscribed by other services. So the transporters which are currently supported are TCP transporter, NATS, RADIUS, MQTT, AMQP 0.9 or AMQP 1.0 which is currently in experimental state, Kafka, NATS streaming transporter and custom transporters. So this transporter transfer the events, call request and process responses. If multiple instances of service are running on different nodes, then the request will be load balanced among them. So that means if you are sending one request for invoking an action or API, it will first check whether the service is running locally or it runs remotely. 
if multiple nodes run, uh, contains the service then it will use the load balancing approach you can switch between the transporters without changing any line of code because just like plug in it can be just uh, it can be just plug and play which means you don't need to make changes in your application code for uh, changing the transporter serialization which is an important uh, part of networking because whenever you want to send the request and response over the transporter you need to serialize and deserialize the packets or data the default serializer is json serializer which is converting the data or object which you are sending uh, into the json format and for that it uses the built in serializer certain data types like a date map or big int cannot be serialized with the native json serializer so if you are working with this kind of data then you have to use some other kind of uh, serializer such as avro notpad or binary serializer so inside your molecular config file you can specify the uh, serializer name by default it is json so you don't need to go and specify that explicitly you can explicitly specify the other serializers names like so something like a proto buff for that uh, you need to install a npm package like a proto buff js and so it is possible to configure whatever uh, serializer you want inside your application dynamic service discovery the molecular framework has a built in module which is responsible for the dynamic discovery of services and nodes and it is also responsible for the periodic heartbeat verification to check the health of the nodes and services the discovery is dynamic because the node is not aware the service discovery and heartbeat detection is happening so whenever the nodes Uh, up and running it will be automatically added to other uh, nodes service list and whenever the uh, node goes down it will be automatically removed so when it starts it announces its presence to all other nodes so that each one can build its own local service registry the this way the following request will be routed to live nodes so there is a local registry which is the default it uses the transporter module to exchange node information and heartbeat packets means inside every broker there is a transporter sorry that there, there is a, a discovery service uh, it uses the transporter to update the informations to uh, each and every node about the current nodes presence So it is simplest and fastest uh, method for uh, service discovery, but the problem is whenever the number of nodes increases, it creates complexity because when the number of nodes greater than hundred, and uh, uh, whenever the nodes come and go down, it will continuously updating the uh, other services. or continuously sending the packets to other services regarding the health of the node so this will decrease the performance of our application so we can use an external redis based discovery that uses a dedicated connection with the redis server 
so this ready server will be maintaining the uh, discovery and heartbeat packets information the this approach reduces the load over the transport module because all the heartbeat and uh, health related information will be stored in radius and all the nodes will be uh, connected with the radius service for load balancing more molecular uses different approaches if a service is running on multiple node instances Service registry uses this load balancing strategies to uh, forward the request to the appropriate node. To configure the strategy, we can set the strategy in the broker options under the registry property. It can be uh, either a name in case of built-in strategies or it can be a strategy class uh, which is uh, inherited from the base strategy in case of custom strategies. So there are some built-in strategies available like a round robin which is uh, using the round robin algorithm to distribute the request. A random strategy, it uh, select a node randomly. CPU usage based means it is selecting a node that has low CPU usage. Latency based strategy which is select a node that has low latency measured by the periodic ping command and the sharding strategy uses a consistent hashing algorithm to find out the node. A fault tolerance is a feature offered by molecular. This option can be enabled or disabled. Molecular has a built-in circuit breaker option. It's a threshold. Uh, it's a threshold-based implementation, which means uh, in a time frame or in a time window, it will continuously check the number of failed request rate. Once the threshold is reached, it automatically triggers the circuit breaker. It means it helps us to connect only to the healthy nodes because if one node is continuously uh, uh, creating or generating error responses or uh, the request processing is failed. So it uh, trip the circuit breaker and it will uh, disallow the forwarding of request to that particular node. The circuit breaker pattern also enables an application to detect whether the fault has been resolved or not. That means we don't need to explicitly check and update the uh, node if when the fault is resolved, it will automatically update. If the problem appears to have been fixed, then the application can try to invoke the operation. The caching is another feature offered by Molecular. It has a built-in caching solution to cache the responses of our service actions. To enable this caching service, we can set the cacher type in our broker option uh, and set a cache true in our action definition because which of the actions responses we want to cache, you can set those actions cache uh, property to true. The cacher generates a key from the service name, action name and the parameters of that context. The built-in caches which are supported is memory cache which is uh, uses a built-in memory cache module. It stores entries in the heap memory. LRU cache, uh, LRU memory cache uh, is another built-in uh, caching method that uses the built-in LRU cache module. It uh, deletes the least recently used items. Redis cacher is another one which uses a built-in Redis based uh, distributed caching module. So most of the modern applications uses distributed caching where the caching data is stored outside the service node. Uh, it uses the IO Redis library 
uh, uh, use it if you have multiple instances of services because if one instance stores some data in the cache the other instance will find it so if you are running multiple instances of our service then it's always better to use a distributed caching so that even if one instance is uh, storing the data into the cache uh, it will the other instances are also able to go and find the data from the cache here is an example for the cache configuration when you start the service broker we can configure the cacher what type of caching we are using here you can see the uh, memory cache and you can specify the time to leave using the TTL property and uh, it is also possible to configure the memory LRU you just need to change the cache type as uh, memory LRU and it is also possible to specify a Redis server URL to indicate that it is going to use a Redis caching service. Metrics and tracing helps us to monitor the molecular application and troubleshoot the problems. Molecular has a built-in metrics module that collects internal molecular and process metric values. We can find, uh, we can define our custom uh, metrics as well, and there are dif uh, different uh, built-in metrics reporters like a uh, console, Prometheus, Datadog, etc. Molecular has a built-in tracing module that collects the tracing information inside a molecular application. There are different uh, built-in tracing exporter like a uh, Sipkin, Jigger, uh, Datadog, etc. Molecular Runner is a helper script that helps to run our molecular project. For example, if you are creating your molecular application using the molecular CLI, it uses this molecular runner script to start all the services, means it will automatically detect all the services and start. With it, you don't need to create a service broker instance with options. We don't need to explicitly create service brokers. Instead, create a molecular config file in the root repository of the uh, with the broker options. You can call the molecular runner in the npm script that automatically load the configuration file, create the broker and load the services. So with the help of this uh, configuration file, it will identify and load the uh, services after creating a broker, service broker instance. Alternatively, you can declare the configuration as environment variables, means you can uh, specify the parameters for the molecular runner in the configuration file or you can pass them as environment variables. Use the molecular.config.js during the development or store the common options. In production, override the values with the environment variables. Here is a sample molecular config.js which uh, contains the node ID, logger, Inf uh, logger informations, transporter details, request timeout, circuit breaker uh, features, metrics enabled or disabled and so on. The API gateway is provided by molecular web package. It is the official API Gateway service for Molecular Framework. It's uh, actually 
uh, a mixin that provided by the molecular web which we can directly uh, implement inside our uh, service so the gateway features will be added to our uh, gateway service which we are creating it is supports the http and https protocols it allows us to serve the static files multiple routes can be configured and support connect like middlewares in global level root level and alias level alias names with the named parameters and rest routes are supported whitelisting of ip is supported multiple body parsers like a json and url encoded parameters supported course headers means if you want to configure the course policy that can be configured rate limiting for uh, setting the usage uh, limit of your uh, services can be configured before and after call hooks available and uh, buffer and the stream handling supported middleware mode uh, that means you can use it like a middleware in with the express js express js is a web application framework database adapters molecular framework has an official set of database adapters we can use these database adapters to persist the data into the database molecular follows the follows the one database per service pattern because in microservices each service can have its own uh, database so it uses one database per service pattern and we can install the molecular db package to in uh, use these adapters and these adapters uh, provide the features like a default cred operations like uh, insert delete update and read are supported means by default implemented cached actions means uh, caching can be enabled in for actions pagination support is support, uh, available pluggable adapters like a uh, needb is the default memory adapter for testing and prototyping and you can use other adapters like MongoDB, PostgreSQL, SQLite, MySQL, and MSSQL. Field filtering for searching is supported. Populating the data into custom format is supported. Encoding and decoding the IDs are supported. Entity lifecycle events for notifications are also supported. Molecular CLI is a command line tool that can be used to create the molecular project, run and test the applications. The molecular init project command is used to create a project and the molecular start is used to start the uh, service broker locally and it is switching to the REPL mode so that it will help us to run the commands in that command REPL command command mode and uh, molecular connect is used for connecting to uh, a particular transporter server the molecular call is used to invoke a molecular service by passing the parameters such as tra transporter name and the uh, function parameters. Emit method is used for uh, sending an event information to other services. Now we can see a demo how we can create a molecular project using this molecular CLI. For that, first we have to install the molecular CLI in our system. 
so for that we can use the npm install minus g then molecular cli command it may take a minute to install the molecular cli globally in our system the molecular cli is installed successfully now we can create a new project inside the current folder for that we can use molecular init project and then specify a project name like a sample api when we run this command it will ask a couple of questions like whether we want to use the api gateway that is molecular web service if you need a, the api gateway you can type yes and press enter if you don't want to use a api gateway uh, press n and press enter so here by default yes is selected you can just press enter because that is by default y is selected now the next question is would you like to communicate with other nodes yes obviously we want to communicate with other nodes so if we say yes then we have to select a transporter a type so it will support different transporters like uh, nads radius mqtt amqp tcp the nad streaming and kafka so we can choose the appropriate one so here i am going with the nats because that is one of the fastest and easiest way to implement the communication between the nodes just selecting the nats and press enter now it is asking would you like to use the caching service by default no is the option but if you want to use you can say yes and press enter and then we have to select a cacher solution so memory and redis supported so since i don't have a redis server so i am going with the memory only selecting memory and press enter then whether we want to add a database demo or a database example need to be added so we can say yes because we want to see how the database adapters are configured so we can say yes for that presenter and would you like to enable metrics yes obviously we want to enable metrics we want to enable tracing yes we want to enable tracing as well and do we need to add the docker and kubernetes sample files means it's going to create the docker files as well as the kubernetes yaml files for the project if you say yes then it will be creating those files if, if i say yes it's creating that and use es lint to lint the code so i don't want to use the linter so i can just say no and next and final question is do you want to run the npm install command to restore all the required packages say yes so it will start installing all the npm packages required for the project it may take maybe a couple of minutes to install all the packages so we can wait for that to complete we can see the molecular project is created now let's go inside the project folder so using the sample api folder so i'm inside this you can open this project in visual studio code so we can see all the files created for this project where we can see here we can see the list of services inside the services folder the 
mixins inside the mixins folder here is the database mixin you can see we will go through this files later and we have the docker compose yaml file for dockerization here is the docker file for the project and we have the kubernetes yaml file for the deployment molecular config file for the configuration of the molecular service and the package.json that contains the scripts for uh, all the packages list and uh, script commands for running and testing the project so if you open the services first here we can see an api dot api.service.js which is the api gateway service here you can see we are importing the api gateway from the molecular web and here is the configuration of the api gateway service so here in this service schema we are using the mixins as api gateway which means the api gateway service features will be added to the current service so that means we don't need to go and create the configurations of api gateway the existing api gateway features will be added to the current service schema the service name is given as api and here some of the service settings you can see some of the methods so if you open the settings you can see the api gateway is going to run on the port number 3000 by default if you want you can override this port number by passing an environment variable exposed ip is uh, 0000 and the uh, middlewares if you want to use you can configure it inside the use collection and the api routes are configured here you here you can see the apis will be starting with a prefix called the api so something like a slash api slash the service name and whitelisting which means it is accessible from everywhere and root level middlewares can be configured here and the other features like uh, authentication authorization alias names and other things can be configured here here the supported body parsers we can see json parser is supported and url encoded is also used <coughs> and inside the and here you can see the static files will be served from the public folder so you can serve the assets from the public folder so that public folder is here so if we want to serve some static files it will be served from the public folder and in the method section which contains some functions that can be executed locally so which of the functions we want to execute locally those functions will be defined inside the method section so here is the jwt token validation okay some sample uh, user name password and other informations are configured already which we can customize later and the second service is a greeter service which uh, does not use us any database it's a very simple service schema so i'm just uh, removing all the comments for time being So it has a setting section, dependency sections, then the actions which are the service methods. Here you can see there is a hello method, welcome method and if you want some event needs to be configured or even subscribers need to be configured that can be done here. Then local methods which can be called from hooks or actions that can be configured here 
then some of the life cycle events like a created action then started then there is a stopped method so these are some of the life cycle methods so this is the structure of our uh, api service here we can see the hello is a rest endpoint that can be called from get using the path slash hello which means we have to use the uh, api slash greeter slash hello can be used and uh, whenever we invoke this in endpoint it will be executing this handler which is simply returns hello molecular and there is another action or another rest api which is slash welcome so here you can see the difference here we you are using rest with an object as the parameter or object as the value but here rest with a string as the value so when we use the object we can specify the method and path but when we use the uh, rest we can directly use the path or along with the path we can also specify the method like a get of welcome so both are same so it means we are using a get method for uh, invoking the welcome action and there is a url parameter called the name which is of string type so from the url we have to receive a name parameter and that can be accessed using the context object so here the handler method receives a context object so context dot params dot name is used for retrieving the parameter name. So it's just to print the welcome and the parameter. The same service or same molecular project also contains a product service which uses a database mixin. So here you can see we are importing the database mixin from the mixin folder. So if you open that we can see a database mixin which contains the database service configurations so for simplicity i'm just removing the comments so this schema contains this the mixin schema is uh, using a db service mixin which means the built-in uh, molecular db service features are available here because it is used as a mixin and there are some events configured you can see there is a cache clean event name so what is a cache clean event name that will be replaced here it's a placeholder okay and there are uh, some methods means whenever the entity is changed means whenever the database entity is changed we need to send a broadcast message to all the other services to clean the cache because if the data is updated we have to inform the other services uh, which has cached this uh, data so that the current cache value is invalidated or invalid and we have to uh, cache the new information so we have to send a broadcast event to all the services saying that uh, the caching data needs to be clean so the cache clean even name is broadcasted so there is another method uh, sorry another life cycle hook that is started means when the database is uh, started or database service is started we have to call the seed method so here this dot seed db is checking whether the seed method exists and then if exist then we are calling the seed method so seed method is defined the uh, here somewhere below
page is not defined here. Should be inside the okay. So the seed method uh, is uh, called by the uh, database service to uh, include some uh, sample records. So the records which needs to be used. So the seed method will be uh, defined inside the product service. Okay, so if you go inside the product service, since we are using the database mix uh, service mix in, you will be able to see the seed method here under the method section. Yes, here you can see. So this seed method is adding some of the products information to the database. So this dot adapter dot insert many is used. So why insert many because here the database is used as mongo uri means if the mongo uri is available then it is going to use the mongo data adapter okay otherwise it's uh, it uses a node environment if it is a test environment to use the memory database adapter otherwise we can explicitly use the new NeDB database adapter. So it checks whether the environment variable contains a key called the Mongo URI with a Mongo URI database adapter or a connection string. Then it use the MongoDB as the database. If, it, if the node environment is a test environment, then it is using the uh, NeDB memory adapter or else we can use a database file so it uses a data folder and inside the data folder it is going to use a db file so this is the database configuration and this database mixin is used inside the product service if you look into the product service product service is actually using a mixin which is the database mixin okay. and <clears throat> here the db mixins name okay this database mixin is used uh, inside this product service and So here the fields which is required in the response field. So available fields in the response. We can specify the ID, name, quantity and price. So here some of the entity validations you can see which uh, for the name we are using string data type with the minimum three characters and price it should be a number with the positive values and here is some hooks which is before means before the action it is uh, executing and some of the actions which is which are defined here uh, the default database operations are provided by the database adapter like uh, list find count create, insert, update and delete that is remove. All these are by default provided by the database adapter. So we don't need to write those uh, methods. We can uh, write additional methods by using this method section. So here increase quantity and decrease quantity are some additional methods which we are writing. So here these are the additional actions which can be invoked using this URL and it is going to perform a database updation operation. Now to test this, we have to go and uh, run the npm run dev command. Now you can see our service is started in localhost 3000. 
So this will give you a molecular uh, UI where you can see the list of REST APIs available. We can also see the nodes. So here the service is running only on a single node you can see and the node status you can see and the services list is visible here and how we can access this list. So for calling this uh, uh, services we can use this endpoints for example if I want to call this a greeter so we can either invoke it from here just by selecting hello and click on try here you can see hello molecular is the response or we can invoke it from outside using api slash uh, reader slash hello so here you can see hello molecular is coming if you want to invoke the second method that is welcome we can pass a parameter like maybe if i'm giving my name and trying so welcome plus that name is coming so if i want to try that i can say welcome and as a parameter i can pass name as ajay and it's saying welcome ajay so we can invoke these rest apis from other applications so similarly we can also perform all the products database related operations as well so that is uh, from my side and uh, that's the end of this webinar thank you everyone for watching this video thank you